Last week, I attempted to eat 50,000 calories in less than 24 hours. Now, for those who haven't watched the video yet, I won't spoil the ending for you. But I will say a lot of people were quite surprised when I showed how much weight I gained after the challenge was over. The first meal I consumed surprisingly happened only a few moments after the 50,000 calorie challenge ended. It was something I had been looking forward to for pretty much the entire past 24 hours. It was something that my mind, my body, and my soul needed desperately. <sighs> A glass of water. As I usually tend to notice after every calorie challenge I do, I saw lots of comments asking the same question. So in this video, instead of talking about how the next few days went, I'd rather just show you. Now, it's time to run. Ten point one miles. Complete, 55 miles on the bike, all in a day's work. Back at it again. So as you all can see, it's not always rainbows and butterflies after these giant calorie challenges. After I do these crazy days of eating, I have to stick to a regimented diet and training routine. If I wasn't doing that, my weight would skyrocket. And speaking of my body weight, here's what it looked like seven days after the 50,000 calorie cheat day challenge. Now I talked about this in a video I made on my third channel, which dives into how I prepare for these calorie challenges. But I came into this calorie challenge a bit lighter than I usually am. Normally I walk around at about 165 to about 170 pounds. This is what I look like at 165 pounds. And this is what I look like coming into the 50,000 calorie challenge. A few pounds lighter than that. And it was pretty interesting to see my weight trends the seven days after the challenge was over. This is a graph showing what my body weight looked like the seven days following the 50,000 calorie challenge. Now I won't go on about this because I've talked about this a lot. I am an endurance athlete. I am currently training for an Ironman, which is happening in October. So a few pounds of weight gain is really not something I'm gonna worry about because I am expending so much energy. Just to show you how many calories I actually burned through training, this is what the next seven days look like after the challenge was over. I do want to touch upon something because a question that I got asked a lot about in the comment section of the video was what were the bathroom trips like during and after the 50,000 calorie cheat day challenge. Now my answer might surprise a lot of you, but I've actually dealt with much worse, believe it or not. I strategically implemented a lot of liquid calories at each meal. Like I knew going into it that I was not going to be able 
most likely not going to be able to eat 50,000 calories in just solid food like pizza, donuts, and all that. So I knew I needed to really maximize my liquid calorie consumption in this challenge. The liquid calories in this challenge accounted for about, I believe about 34 to 37% of the total calories that I consumed in the actual challenge itself. So I'm actually really glad I decided to do that. Now, if you guys remember the whole goal was to consume 50,000 calories within 24 hours. And a big part of that was the calories themselves that I consumed. Now, if you don't know this, oil is one of the most calorie dense things you can actually consume, which is why I decided to put them in the shakes that I was consuming during the 24 hours. The other thing about oil is that it can make you go to the bathroom and it can also keep you in the bathroom for a long time. <laughs> Another question that I got asked a lot was how much of the 50,000 calories did I absorb? Now, if you all know about fat gain, you know about calories and muscle and all that, you'll know that there are about 3,500 calories in one pound of fat, which in theory would mean that I would gain about 14.2 pounds from this challenge. And to everyone that's not American, that's about 6.5 kilograms. Obviously, that didn't happen. Now, there's no way I'd be able to burn 50,000 calories in a single day, or even a quarter of that amount. I mean, I can burn about 10,000. As you guys have seen, I can, I'm capable of doing that. So based on not even just this challenge, but all the crazy calorie challenges that I've done, I strongly believe that there's an upper threshold for the amount of calories that the human body is capable of absorbing. And now I know a lot of people are gonna hear me say that and be like, oh, I'm gonna go out and eat 80,000 calories in a single sitting and great. I'm not going to get into it. No, it's not. It doesn't work like that. Don't get me wrong. You are going to absorb the majority of those calories. Going back to what I said earlier, I did gain weight from this challenge, but the majority of it I hold in my lower body. Another question that I was asked a lot is how I felt after eating all of that food. This really shouldn't come as a surprise when I say this, but the day that this challenge ended, it was brutal. It, it really sucked, but I'm pretty much used to it at this point. I find that these massive 24 hour calorie challenges usually hit the hardest the day after I finish them. But what I also find is that the day after, the day after I finish them is where I have these huge energy spikes. Now, hopefully you guys can see with what I showed you earlier, the amount of training that I did during the week. And just from looking at my training log during the week, I expended a lot of energy the days following the challenge. Now, obviously my calorie intake was super low during those days, given the fact that I just had attempted to eat 50,000 calories. I mean, with that much food in one day, I am definitely not hungry the next day. In fact, I very rarely am hungry the next day, which means I generally don't have a meal the next day because there's so much actual food still in my body. So my appetite usually returns to normal about 36 to 48 hours after these challenges are over. And then throughout the next couple of days, I'm on top of my diet. I'm eating fairly low calorie and I usually eat one meal a day. This is my protocol after I do these huge calorie challenges. And it doesn't sound like a lot of fun, but that's pretty much what I have to do in order to continue to do what I do, which leads me to my final point here. Hopefully this doesn't come as a surprise to you all, but these calorie challenges are not healthy to do at all, which is why I don't do them on a regular basis. It's also why I don't recommend for anybody else to do them. But the flip side to that is that I've been doing these for a long time now, been doing these for about six years. And I've definitely learned a lot about my body over those six years and I've learned what my limits are. And I definitely know how much is too much. And I also just have to say this as a YouTuber with a really odd ability to eat insane amounts of food, it's my job to keep you all entertained. I've tried experimenting with videos that aren't super high calorie food challenges. And unsurprisingly, they're not as well received as these high calorie challenges are. It's totally fine though, because at the end of the day, I love my job, I love you guys, and I enjoy what I do and I would not be doing what I do if I did not enjoy it. I know this wasn't a food challenge this week, but I really had to take some much needed recovery time after the insane challenge that I just did. If you guys wanna keep rocking with me, I'm gonna go ahead and put another food challenge that I think you guys are gonna enjoy along with a playlist that I think you're all gonna enjoy right along the sidebar right there. And if you guys are new to the channel, you can subscribe down below. Once again, everyone, thanks for watching the video and I'll see you all in the next food challenge. Later guys.